If you are worried you have Lyme disease or just like the outdoors and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. The efficacy and the accepted regimen of antibiotic treatment for Lyme disease has been a point of real contention among physicians and organizations and patients. Well, now there's a new study that finds that the Lyme bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, survive a 28-day course of antibiotics months after infection. Now, joining me now to discuss this incredible research is lead author, Monica Embers, Ph.D. Dr. Embers is with the Tulane University School of Medicine, and she's an advisor for Bay Area Lyme Foundation. Dr. Embers, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you. Now, you've had two papers published um, basically at the same time in PLOS One and the American Journal of Pathology, which I will link to in the show notes for the podcast. Um, Recently, which they looked at the persistence of uh, Borrelia burgdorferi spirochetes after antibiotic treatment. Uh, Dr. Embers, before we get into the meat of the research, which is incredibly interesting, um, can you explain why this study is important? Certainly. Um, Over the years, we've begun to realize that a number of patients are continuing to have symptoms after they're treated with the recommended courses of antibiotics. And so this is commonly uh, denoted as post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. And our goal really is to try to understand post-treatment Lyme syndrome and to identify the causative factors so that we can improve treatment. Now, the research itself, I, I read both reports, and it was really quite involved um, from treating with antibiotics to xenodiagnosis. Um, and I really want to give you the floor here, Dr. Embers. Uh, can you discuss the research methods that I believe listeners will find quite fascinating? Sure. Um, importantly, we use the um, rhesus macaque model of Lyme disease because it most closely mimics human disease. So they experience the same things that humans would experience in Lyme disease. And we also try to get as as close as possible to um, mimicking the human infection by inoculating these animals with ticks. So we we, um, have infected ticks, we feed them on the monkeys, and then um, let, let the infection progress and then after a period of time, we give them, in this case, it was four months, give them 28 days of doxycycline and then let them, let the infection progress if it was still persistent over a period of 12 months. Mm-hmm. And then um, we looked to try to identify persistent bacteria, spirochete bacteria in these monkeys. And because it's so difficult to try to culture Borrelia from infected patients, um, we use a technique called xenodiagnosis. And this is a technique where you feed uninfected ticks on the animals, and those ticks will take up the bacteria that are otherwise hard to find or culture. And so that's, that was sort of the key in us being able to identify that intact, persistent spirochete bacteria were lingering in those subjects. Right, and... and You had some very, very important findings ranging from post-treatment infection, viable bacterium found in different organs, and uh, issues with the bullseye rash. Um, Dr. Embers, can you spend some time on discussing some of these very important findings? Certainly. Uh, We also looked at the immune responses. So we looked at the antibody responses and how how, how 
well those reflected the infectious uh, process and the infection status. And so we saw tremendous variability in the immune response. We also saw variability in those monkeys that um, did or did not develop the bullseye rash. Um, and we also saw differences in um, how they responded to infection. Some some had a rash, some, some had persistent spirochetes in the heart, some in the nervous tissues, some in the joints. Um, and it was really, um, it's really good to use this model because we know that every difference we're seeing is the host. So it's a host-dependent difference because we're using the same strain of bacteria to infect these uh, subjects. Now, how is this research important concerning what we consider traditional diagnosis and treatment of Lyme disease, you know, the day-to-day physician treating a patient. How is this research going to affect that in your, in your view? So there has been contention um, over, over many years about the guidelines for antibiotic treatment of Lyme disease. There are two different schools of thought, and um, our research pertains specifically to Uh, patients who have a disseminated infection, one in which they have gone undiagnosed for a period of time and then they're given the recommended treatment. So I think in terms of um, how physicians look at this and think about treating their patients, it's important to recognize that treating with doxycycline for 28 days in in a patient who has been infected for a while may not be efficacious. So I think it's time to, to look at the guidelines again and come up with some better, some better options. Right. So, Dr. Embers, so what's next? Do you have some follow-up research planned, or what do you plan on go- going with this? Absolutely. Our, our research now is really focused on finding better treatment options for patients. So we're testing uh, new therapeutics. We're testing different combinations of antibiotics. And, you know, we have these model systems that we can use to evaluate uh, therapeutics and hopefully uh, we'll be able to use those in humans one day. Yeah, it was very fascinating stuff and I encourage people to check it out. I will, like I said, post in the show notes the two studies and the press release and you can check it out for yourself. And it, uh, it does clearly seem to support claims of patients that have been uh, describing lingering symptoms uh, that have been shunned in the past. Certainly. We, we, we performed these studies very carefully. Um, we included as many controls as we could possibly think of, and uh, we're very confident in the results. Yes, fascinating stuff. Well, thank you, Dr. Monica Embers, for your time and expertise, and congratulations on this very interesting study. Thank you, Robert.